Hello, welcome back. Today I'm at the Fairmount Mausoleum. And as you can see behind me, it is quite massive. It almost looks like a state capitol building. It was built in 1929 and contains the remains of more than 17,000 people. It also has the largest stained glass collection in the state of Colorado. I've actually never been inside before, so I'm super excited to have a story in there. And we're going to be visiting Dr. Florence Sabin. She's a pioneer for women in science who helped improve the health of Coloradoans. So follow me and we'll go check it out. Florence Sabin was a medical scientist. She was the first woman to hold a full professorship at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. The first woman elected to the National Academy of Sciences and the first woman to head a department at the Rockefeller Institute for Medical Research. Florence Rena Sabin was born on November 9, 1871 in Central City, Colorado. Florence's mother, Serena, was a school teacher who later died from a postpartum infection, or sepsis, in 1878, when Florence just turned seven. Her father, George Sabin, was a mining engineer living and working on site with his family. George did not feel that he could give his daughters a good home without their mother and needed to move back to the mountains. So shortly after her mother's death, Florence and her older sister Mary moved in with her uncle Albert in Chicago before relocating to Vermont with their paternal grandparents. Uncle Albert was a tremendous influence on Florence and from her relationship with him, she developed a love of nature and a keen interest in books and music.
This saving girl soon moved with her uncle to an old family farm in Burma. Florence became very interested in the life story of Levi Sabin, an ancestor who had graduated from medical school in 1798. Florence's father had always wanted to be a doctor, but the obligations of mining overwhelmed him, and his thoughts of a medical career slowly disappeared. But Florence began to secretly harbor her father's dream. In 1885, Florence enrolled at Vermont Academy and graduated in 1889, where her scientific interests were finally allowed to develop. Sabin earned her bachelor's degree from Smith College in 1893. In 1896, she enrolled at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine as one of 14 women in her class. Upon graduation, Sabin obtained an internship at Johns Hopkins Hospital. In 1902, she began to teach in the Department of Anatomy at Johns Hopkins. By 1905, she was promoted to associate professor and then finally appointed professor in June 1917. The first woman to become a full professor at a medical college. In 1921, Sabin was named the first female president of the American Association of Anatomists. She continued her research on the origins of blood blood vessels, blood cells, the histology of the brain, and the pathology and immunology of tuberculosis at Hopkins. In 1924, Sabin's work on the origins of blood vessels earned her membership in the National Academy of Sciences. In 1925, Sabin left Johns Hopkins after completing her research and her desire to research full-time. In September 1925, she became head of the Department of Cellular Studies at the Rockefeller Institute for Medical Research in New York City. Her research focused on the lymphatic system, blood vessels, and cells, and tuberculosis. In 1925, she was voted into the National Academy of Science. She was the first woman to gain membership in this prestigious body and would remain the lone female member for the next 20 years. In 1926, she joined the research committee of the National Tuberculosis Association. And in 1938, Sabin left her position at Rockefeller Institute and moved back to Colorado for retirement. After six years of quiet retirement, Sabin accepted Colorado Governor John Vivian's request to chair a subcommittee on health beginning in 1944. She presented her findings, asserting that the state was backward in regard to public health. In the letter to the governor in April 1945, knowing that health care legislation had been voted down consistently in the past due to uninterested politicians, she was relentless in her demand for reform. While she was in her early 70s, Sabin refused to let a snowstorm prevent her from making it to a speech in support of her cause, despite public travel concerns. Beginning with this speech, Sabin worked to have politicians who opposed health reform defeated by those in support of it. These efforts resulted in the passing of a set of laws in her name the Sabin Health Laws, modernized public health in Colorado by providing more hospital beds to treat tuberculosis, resulting in significant reductions in cases. Sabin died of a heart attack on October 3, 1953. She was 81 years old. She was cremated and her ashes were interred here at the Fairmount Mausoleum. In 1959, the state of Colorado donated a statue of Sabin to the National Statutory Hall Collection. In 1973, 
Sabin was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame. In 1985, Sabin was inducted into the Colorado Women's Hall of Fame. In 2005, the John Hopkins University School of Medicine honored Sabin's legacy by naming one of its four colleges after her. Sabin's collection of papers and medical records from 1903 to 1941 are stored and some are even released upon request. So we're coming up. Her ashes are right here in the middle. These books right here. On the left is her sister. Mary Sophia Sabin, and then on the right is Florence Rena Sabin. So those are where her ashes are, right in the middle of this case. And there's a beautiful stained glass window right here. Yeah, this is such an amazing mausoleum here, and she was an amazing woman who did a lot. Hope you enjoyed that video and getting to see the grave of Dr. Florence Sabin and the Fairmount Mausoleum. Please like and subscribe for some more videos, and I'll see you at the next grave. Thanks.